Hey guys, Dr. Anas here. Since we are now in the new wave of COVID-19, I thought I should bring up this topic for everyone's knowledge and update. It's officially seven months now from our first lockdown. Keadaan pun telah reda pada suatu ketika dan kini semakin meningkat supaya yang tak ingat punya. Many studies have been done on COVID-19 and its relation to orthodontics treatment. So when the survey was done among specialists and dentists, it is found that sebenarnya banyak orang yang tak tahu apa nak buat. And sadly, what is clear is that there is no definitive evidence base on the right protocol when it comes to orthodontic treatment. Tapi apa yang pasti, banyak protokol yang dinasihatkan dan disyorkan untuk mengurangkan penularan wabak ini. Dari awal MCO sehingga sekarang, kerajaan telah menasihatkan rawatan gigi hanya terhad kepada rawatan kecemasan atau emergency sahaja. Don't ever tell me what I can't do, ever! In my opinion, it's actually a very grey area because what is defined as emergency differs from one person to another. Bagi kebanyakan dentis, rawatan kecemasan mungkin terhad kepada gigi yang sakit atau bila berlaku bengkak. Tetapi bagaimana pula untuk pesak sakit yang kecil di mana gigi susu dia patah dan juga macikiah di mana gigi palsu dia longgar. Dia orang pun nak makan juga kan? Dalam rawatan braces, tentu sekali such urgencies are not life threatening. I know that. You guys are not going to die from a loose bracket or long wires which is impinging on your gums. Nevertheless, it is advised to fix those problems quickly to prevent long treatment time. This is taking too long! Sebab kalau berlanjutan, motivasi pesakit mungkin akan berkurangan dan kesakitan-kesakitan kecil itu boleh menyebabkan stres pula kepada pesakit. Banyak protokol baru telah dikenakan dalam era norma baru ini. Selain dari PPE yang dipakai oleh nurse dan doktor, mungkin temu janji juga diberi mengikut jangka waktu yang tertentu bagi mengelakkan ramai orang menunggu di ruang lega. Sakit tidak dinasihatkan untuk datang ramai-ramai, tak payahlah nak buat sekampung. Untuk pesakit kanak-kanak, hanya salah seorang pada ibu bapa sahaja dibenarkan untuk menemani dalam bilik surgery. Kawasan di sekeliling klinik sentiasa dicuci dengan disinfektan, terutama kawasan-kawasan yang selalu disentuh dengan tangan. As orthodontists, there are techniques and appliances that we can use to reduce closely scheduled appointments. Maknanya, ada teknik dan mungkin appliance yang kita akan berikan kepada pesakit di mana temu janji tak perlu terlalu rapat. I'll be back. So one of the common practice which I do in spite of the COVID or not is to tie the brace individually with stainless steel wire dan tidak menggunakan uh, o-ring elastic module. Sebab you all tahu getah yang digunakan untuk mengikat braces itu dia akan menyerap ilio dan akan mengembang dalam kelemahan dia mudah jatuh dan tidak mengikat lagi wire kepada brace. Penggunaan spring adalah lebih efektif dan tidak mengharapkan pesakit datang begitu kerap berbanding dengan power chain. Cost dia mungkin lebih mahal, jauh lebih mahal in fact but actually rawatannya berterusan. And in some patients with deep bite Deep bite adalah keadaan di mana gigi depan atas menutupi gigi depan bawah banyak okay? Jadi bila patient gigit dan disenyum, dia tak nampak sangat gigi bawah And one of the treatment modalities that we use for deep bite adalah menggunakan reverse curve nickel titanium okay? The wire ini adalah sangat bagus, efektif dan dia menyebabkan pergerakan gigi berterusan And studies have shown that with the use of the NITA reverse curve, patients can be seen up to only 10 to 12 weeks within each interval But in my practice, I still insist 6 to 8 weeks sebab sekiranya one of the brackets falls off while using this wire, ia boleh mengundang masalah lain pula. Other techniques that I can recommend is that instead of using power chain again in order to close space, you can do closing loop. So these are the wires which we bend, they're the curve. It looks a bit funky when you have it in your mouth but actually they are very very effective and teeth continues to move in spite of you not seeing your dentist in a long time after we have activated them. It's been a long day Without you, my friend. So for dentists who are watching this, I do have some recommendations. So based on studies which they have done and when they do dye tests and they apply it around the clinic, what they have found, which is quite obvious, a lot of traces of aerosol appears on the sleeve and on the chest area. Which is why, in spite of having the PP on, I still suggest you guys to have those disposable sleeves and disposable plastics on the front, which you can change in between each patient. And look, I get it, it's not glamorous. Oh yeah. I love your um, sleeve. Having this attire on every day, more and more I feel like I'm working the wet market than actually going to a dental practice. Bang, minta dua ekor, potong lapan, bang kulit ya. Eh? But what I can share is that ever since we practice such protocol, me and my nurses have never been healthier because not only we protect ourselves from COVID but also other transmitting diseases through inhalation or through touch. 
So at the end of the day, all I can say is that we should all work hard towards prevention of the spread of COVID. There are no guarantees in life for sure. As long as we are aware and continue to do so, inshallah, we are protected. And good things will come our way. Or maybe not all the time. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. That's all for me, Dr. Anas. Since then, stay safe. I'll see you again in the next video.